in the squad. I was in the 2-4 and the 2-6. Oh, here we go. All right, guys, we are live. We are live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Police Off the Cuff After Hours. You know me. My name is Mark DeMeo. You know my partner, my partner in all things law enforcement, Bill Cannon. What's up, Bill? What's up, man? I haven't seen Jenna in years. She was a year. She was an intern. I did my extern job. That's I right. did my externship there because I was getting my master's in forensic psych at John Jay. That's right. That's right. It was the best. <laughs> yeah. Take it. I'm sure they were happy to have you, by the way. I loved it. And my, I, I loved riding with Sergeant Cannon because he was like a loose cannon and he would take, he would take <laughs> me on things I definitely was not supposed to be I in. Supposed to go to some Am I allowed to talk time. about those things? Sure. I'm off the job nine years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what did that involve okay so there was well, before, one... you know what, before you tell me the story okay. let me just introduce you to our audience okay. our, our our guest tonight is a, a comedian she's a prankster she has her own podcast it's called social studies she also does these videos that most of them have gone viral some of them uh, the list include are you on the list and no selfie zone i watch them they're hysterical Thanks. um they really are a study into uh stupidity <laughs> yeah, human behavior. Yeah, human, human stupidity. Behavior. <laughs> um, so, uh, welcome, Jenna. Is it Cohen or Kingsley or Jenna Cohen? Kingsley, uh, Kingsley, Kingsley, Jenny Kingsley. And uh, the podcast is Social Studies with Jenny Kingsley. All right. So, uh, and uh, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And Bill, I'm so excited to see you. you no, know, Jenna, I, I mean, I know I took you on some crazy shit, but could you tell me one of the things I took you on? I yes. Don't, I don't so, right. so in general, like I always was like riding usually with Donna Torres or Robert right. Mooney, because Robert was like really into also like um, the stuff that I was studying. So I would ride with him and Bobby, but when I'd love to ride with Sergeant Cannon because he definitely let me do dangerous things with him. <laughs> he always had the siren up on the dashboard and he would drive. I was like convinced we were going to die. But one day you took me to a guy. I don't know if you remember this, probably not because you've seen more shit on your job than I saw on your job. <laughs> but a guy kidnapped his girlfriend. She had twins and he kidnapped one yes, of his twins. I remember that. And so yeah. he was holding her hostage and they went up on the phone lines and everything to find him. It was so exciting. And then Sergeant Cannon went into the building and I was like, I can come with you. And it was like a live <laughs> unfolding crime scene. And all of a sudden there's like massive commotion. All the detectives were coming in, I think from like the three, four, maybe what was up there? It was up in the Twilight like, Nights, that's right. That's yeah, right. so like there was like all this commotion and people were running around and suddenly everyone has like bulletproof vests on and guns on. And I was like, oh my God, I should like get out of here because I had neither. And when I ran onto the street, cause the guy had pulled a gun from like the window. When I ran onto the street, <laughs> all the, the detectives had their guns pointed at me because I was coming out of the building. And I was like, only Sergeant Cannon would get me into this. But I loved it. Like I wanted to, I wanted to do things like that. I believed in risking the lives of our interns. I wanted some action. That's what I was there for. You know, what was those, uh, those guys that used to put in the squad? Was it, were, were the cadets? Yes. Hey, Bill, your, your sound is very low tonight, by the oh, way. I'm sorry. I'll, 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 yeah. I, I said it lower because uh, Jenna's microphone was, uh, was way up. Okay. How is it now? You can go a little higher. Okay. You should probably talk when you're raising it so I can hear what it sounds uh, like. Can you, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, a little bit better. Yeah. All right. Oh, maybe yeah, you could talk a little bit louder too. All right, I'll talk a little louder and I'll there you go. try to get you know. We, we had these cadets in the squad. We had one cadet in the squad. <laughs> he was a good kid, this kid Christian. You know, he used to go out and uh there's like little things you do in an investigation that <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like uh, get lunch or coffee, whatever. And so they let him take the car. And one day I walked to get my lunch around the corner. I was on 125th Street and I see our detective squad car going down like 125th Street. For those who've never been there, it's like three lanes of traffic going one way and three lanes of traffic going the other way. And in the middle of it, there's like two yellow lines. 
And uh, this kid, this our our I see a police car driving lights and sirens in the middle of the street, and I'm like, holy shit, what the hell's going on? I I had my radio on me. I didn't hear anything coming over, but I turned it up loud and I'm putting it to my ear. I almost went over the radio central. What's going on on 125th street. And then all of a sudden I look as the car's passing by me and it's the cadet <laughs> by himself. Like somebody sent him to go get food. Rushing to the crime scene. No, somebody sent him to go get food somewhere and oh. they use the police car. And this kid's going lights and sirens just down 125th street by himself. Like and I, had, I, had a I pulled them over. I said, "Listen, man, you can't do that, man. <laughs> <laughs> we can't help." Are you sure it wasn't Sergeant Cannon driving? <laughs> no, no, it was the kid, man. It was the kid. Uh, I, remember, um, I remember we had a um, on 125th Street. We had another intern, and th these guys went into this refrigerator store, like three or four of them, and they announced a stick up, and they started pistol whipping one of the workers. And the owner pulled out a shotgun and shot, killed two of them and shot two others. I it, it was unbelievable. Uh, and the, the old guy was like 73 years old and he was so, so calm. He goes, hey, I said, hey, there's no money here. Why don't you just go home? Leave us alone. I, I don't have any money. He goes, but they started pistol whipping my guy. He goes, I have, I've had this shotgun in this box for like 25 years. He goes, I never ever thought I'd have to use it. Not only did he use um, it, but he used it pretty well. They had buckshot. One guy got shot 16 times in, the, in his back, you know, with the pellets, how the pellets spread out. Oh, my so God. So he, he killed two of the robbers, and, and two of them were wounded. They went to St. Luke's. They were like, oh, we, we got held up. They were like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know what? I like that story so much. We, I gotta, I'm going to listen to it like there's a, a bedtime story. <laughs> I, I love stories like that those stories make me so happy the other cool thing though that that another detective let me do that i won't say their name on here just because i don't have their approval um but i'll tell you later is um they needed to get into this there was like a drug dealer wanted for like a double homicide and we needed to get into his mom's apartment and they dressed me up, like they put a billet through vest on me and I went in like as a visiting nurse to get into the apartment. And that was also so much fun. <laughs> that, was I nice loved to, it. that was nice to me, at least they gave you a vest. <laughs> they gave me a vest, like I didn't have a vest with you, but I didn't care. And then the first time I saw a dead body, I wasn't, I, the thing I wasn't prepared for, cause I had like studied so much homicide, you know, like I worked in, there was an FBI lab in my school and I was working in that lab. So we were like coding all these homicides, but the thing I wasn't prepared for is how much a dead body smells. Like oh, I God. had no, I, I like, I didn't even, it didn't occur to me. And so uh, I think I was with Jimmy and there was a, like a, a drug dealer that died. He was like dead for a couple of days on the fifth floor of a walk up on like a hundred and somewhere on the East side. And we walked into the house and there was just piles of cocaine, like all over the kitchen, like piles, like it looked like a movie set. Like it was crazy. And he had been dead and it was like August. It was like a hundred degrees and he had been dead for, and I was like, Ooh. like it took everything to not throw up. And they're all here eating lunch, like the medical examiner's eating lunch because you guys are so used to it. And I was like, this is, that was bad. You know, Jenna, one of the things I, I used to always joke about is that when you get a homicide, no one, no one ever dies on the first floor. And it's always a walk up, six or seven <laughs> floors, no elevator. That's on, true, right? by the no way. One, All the ones I went to. It's Murphy's Law. No one gets killed on the first floor, you know? That's so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. I yeah. loved it. Those were, that was such so much. I was with you guys for like years. I was there for like three years. I loved it. I remember that. <laughs> I loved it. And then after... Cause I wanted to go into the FBI and so like the behavioral science unit. Um, but when I applied, I went through phase one and then they changed it. Like first you had to live in Quantico for 16 weeks, I think. And they changed it to 21, which I couldn't do cause of my son. Um, but they, I went into like private, this like private firm and it was all like mergers and acquisitions. And I was coming from you guys. And I was like, this is not for me. Like, I don't want this. I want like, the dead people. Yeah. I want the criminals. So, <laughs> are you As working? I say in that, that with a smile. I look like a psychopath. Jenna, are you working in that field now? No, I'm not. I um, I started writing. I started writing uh, shortly after when I was at that job. I didn't like the private 
um, investigation was actually like a really cool job. It was um, owned by like some MI6 guy from uh, the UK, but I started writing there and then I loved the writing and then it got picked up and then it was going to get turned into a show. And my agent was like, you should try stand up. And I was like, stand up. No way. I never do. And then I started doing it and it was, it worked out. And then I started making my videos. Uh, what, but, year, what year did you start stand up? Uh, this is probably, you know, I don't know. It's probably, I don't know. You know what? I don't even know. Seven years. I, like time is like so, but um, probably seven years ago. But I I stopped. I stopped doing stand up because it's never ultimately like what I wanted to do. Like I, I'm a writer and I love doing like the videos and I love writing and I love comedy. But the life, you know, I was like opening for Jackie Martling for a while. So right. just being on like the the road and all that. I was just like, it, it wasn't for me, but I, I love standup and I love the people I met and it was fun while I did it. But Bill, yeah. you do stand up. Are you and still doing so, it? So does Mark. Mark's been doing oh, it. Oh, you do? He's been doing it for 25 years. Oh, come on. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Mark, where do you live? Are we allowed to say? I mean, you don't have to give me your exact address. I live in the Bronx. Oh, okay. So where do you do stand up? Uh, I mean, Right now, not too many places. No, before before yeah, this. You know. I, I did go up last night. I, I did a spot last night. It was pretty interesting. Was it outside or indoors? No, it was indoors. They're opening up now. Don't tell okay. us where Cuomo will raid the place. Yeah, don't <laughs> listen. Everything's, everything's on the up and up. Uh, but it was great to be back on stage. It was just like, uh, you know, I used to keep the schedule before. And now the idea of coming home from, uh, you know, my I have a little day gig that I work as a concierge in the city um, on Sunday. So to go home and then have to come back into the city, which is, mind you, it's something I did every single night of the week. Yeah. Seven days a week. You Bill will tell you my That's schedule. That's incredible. Insane. So you did it while you were a detective. Yeah, I did it through a, um, at least 15 years while I was on the job. Wow. But just the fact that I had to leave and go out of my house last night, man, I was MF in the whole, I can't, what did I do? Why am I, oh, I don't, I don't do but then <laughs> I realized. Was the place in the Bronx? I need the money. Was the know, place that, in the Bronx? I'm sorry? Was the place in the Bronx? No, it's in the city, in Times okay. Square. Oh. <laughs> so, but I just used to do this every single day. And now the idea of uh, starting up again and, you know, having to build up to that schedule again, I was kind of enjoying coming home and getting drunk every night, you know? <laughs> That's so funny. I know. Well, it's, I was talking, do you know uh, Regina Zuchico? She of course. She's a comic. So she, uh, she was on my podcast yesterday. Well, it aired today. But we were talking about how before we would like, work all day or whatever and then go you know like I remember leaving my house sometimes if you have like a midnight show even like you know like I go like at the stand sometimes I'd be on the midnight show you know if you're not like on the eight and ten you're on the midnight so I was we were talking and she's like she did one thing and she's like that's my limit for the day I mean she's the um the warm-up comic for the view I mean, she's a good friend of mine Oh, she's and, so awesome. And, Je and Jenna, do you know that her father owns three supermarkets? We talked about yeah. that because she had a video of... Um, and they're expensive as hell. <laughs> they're <laughs> no, expensive as hell because one of them is so right... That's the supermarket I go to. That's so funny. Someone actually wrote to me and they're like, oh, that explains why there was a DJ booth because she was doing like line hyping at the like height of yeah, no that was funny lockdown, which i love yeah yeah it was really funny during the middle of the COVID, she was out there and uh, oh that's so funny your video let me ask you a question I'm yeah ask your me videos. your videos are great thank you uh, bill turned me on to them he said they're viral so i checked them out now tell me about the process okay because obviously you said you got into writing so what is the pro take us through the process the idea comes take us through the whole thing Okay, so I always loved to prank people, like my whole life. Like when I was growing up, I grew up in the city and to get like free taxi rides, I would prank that like we, I prank the taxi drivers. My how, friends, how, tell us how. I would just talk these elaborate stories about like how, you know, why I had to get somewhere. And I was like, we have no money, can you take us? You know, we were like, I was like 14 uh -huh. and we would get like five of us in the taxi for free. Like, 
all the time. Or like, I would just, my friends like, you, you know, would be like, okay, like if we were in a mall and they were like, pretend you're like, sh- like getting strangled by the like hoodie or whatever. And I would all, I can't turn down a dare, first of all. So um, when I was writing for like magazines and newspapers, I always wanted to do like social experiments or pranks. And I pitched, kept pitching, like, I'm gonna, you know, can I do this and I'll write about it. And they're like, "Mm, no one's gonna like that. And so when I did, um, I did that, sh- I did the Access TV, the Gotham, uh, yeah. live from Gotham and the producers of that show, I pitched them an idea and I was like, I want to do a prank show, but instead of doing, um, you know, silly pranks like Jackass, which I love, by the way, I want to do like more social experiment pranks and see if New Yorkers will believe it. And so my first one was, I had this idea to be the Starbucks bouncer. And so we shot that really for a sizzle. We didn't What's think, the name of that one so people could look it up? Um, that's called, Are You on the List? Starbucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love it. Go ahead, go ahead. Tell us so um, I went to, it was, we had a film at five different Starbucks. I had like three hidden camera guys and I had like, I had two lav mics on me. And I told people, and I had a velvet rope, which I stole, yeah, 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 yeah. I stole that by the way, like years before. So um, it's a long story, but it was a good story. Um, so we, um, we put the velvet rope in front of Starbucks and I had a clipboard and I told people they couldn't come in unless they were on the list. And similar to the Apple store, I was like, you have to register, you have to make an appointment. And I told certain people like, you know, there's like a coffee shop around the corner. Like you can just go there and wait until your appointment, you know? So what I couldn't believe, I mean, you know, New Yorkers, I couldn't believe how many people got online and waited online and how many people listened to me and walked away. So like, what? But how many plants did you have? Cause you know, I'm a comic, Bill's a comic. We, we set up these- In Starbucks, believe it or not, I only had one plant. Only uh, one. And by plant, we mean somebody that's actually working with you. I only had one plant in the Starbucks, believe it or not, as crazy as that is. I honestly couldn't believe that was an easier. All the videos that I was moving are easier. The Starbucks, the uh, social networking in real life, because oh. you, know, you move so much, no one's going to discover the cameras because by the oh, time no. they're on to you, you're in a different location. Mark, let, Mark let me just shout out to our uh or uh, chatters, or live chatters. Matt oh, so live chatters? How yes. did I see that? Matt Sully, thank you so much for that $10 super chat. Mark and I will definitely have a drink on you. And I also just wanted to show something. One of our fans gave us, Mark and I, this great bottle yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of Cabernet. And oh. uh, whenever I get a bottle of Cabernet, I always look out how much it costs. And it wasn't cheap, so... <laughs> Thank you very, very much. I didn't drink it yet because I wanted to Aaron, show you. Right? His name is Aaron. Aaron, yes, Aaron. That's so nice of him. Oh, it was Aaron, so nice. Aaron, you're awesome. Uh, let me shout out for first time. to uh, Dawn Marie, Michael McAuliffe, of course, the Pranzos, Peter Pranzo, and, the, the, and oh my God, how do we forget the Pranzos? Lieutenant Pranzo, Mesh Angelap, um, MC's Audio, Matt Sully, we said, Michelina, uh, Richella Pranzo, they're a tag team, the Pranzos. We love them. Uh, Ryan Investigative Group, I just wanted to shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the great Jenna Cohen Kingsley, who was actually it's Jenna Kingsley. All right, Jenna Kingsley. I won't use the Cohen I mean, I'm Cohen. both, but yeah, Jenna but, Kingsley. So she was, if you, uh, anyone wants to find anything, it's under she, she was an intern in Homicide. I can't even tell you how many years ago, but we did some exciting things. It was and so now, fun. Now she's a writer and a comic, and she's doing great things. So, so let's go. Let's let's go back to the Starbucks thing. So okay. you're, it was so Starbucks wasn't in on it at all. Zero in on it. In so fact, when the managers come out and they're actually confronting you, that's that is hundred percent real. They do you have to get their okay? So for that one, I didn't get anyone's okay because we we didn't. Th- I didn't think anybody would ever see that video. I thought we were going to shoot it for a sizzle we were going to make a sizzle and then we were going to pitch it as a show. So I put it up on YouTube and I got no releases, nothing. I thought, you know, I thought it was funny. I thought it was good. I put it on YouTube and uh, I like tweeted it out 
And then suddenly like some big people like Pat Kiernan, you know, from New York one uh, retweeted it. And I was like, I don't know how he found it. And like, suddenly I got a call like a couple hours later and they're like, you're on one of my friends is like, you're on the news. I was like, for what? Like, I, I was like, like, what did I do? Like, and they're like, the Je- Jenna, Jenna, let's, let's show one of your videos. This okay, video, go ahead. Yeah. This video went viral. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, if, which one is this I, one? Hang on a second. I was hoping we'd see some more scandalous things in his folder, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, we were going to do it on StreamYard because uh, StreamYard, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more user friendly. We keep running into this problem. with Mark, this. you're talking right over it. No, it's not playing. No, it's not playing. <laughs> it's not playing. No. Uh-oh. But uh, something happened with your mic. So I guess... Um, yeah, that's the thing with the Zoom. It's it's very clunky, Zoom. That's I know. For I, some reason, I couldn't hook my mic up to StreamYard, so this is my fault. The Zoom. That's why I hate I hate Zoom. Well, I mean, Zoom. It, it was good for a while, but once you start expanding and you start, uh, you know, adding some more stuff to the show, it's 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 not it's not user. It's for meetings. It's not for. Uh, it, ju- it just came up now. I could see it. But Jenna, that video got one point three million views. Yes, that was if you if you were monetized. Yeah, if you were monetized, you would have made some coin. So that one, I that one I actually was hired to create. I did that for a brand. So um they hired me and I didn't put an ad on because again, whoever thinks millions of people are, are gonna see it. And not only is it did it go viral on YouTube, it also went viral on the Facebook player. So that's like another who knows how many millions. And then um Actually, someone wrote to me. Which video this, are you talking about right now? Uh, the so that's the social networking in real life that he was going to play. Um, oh, that the, one was sitting the, down with the people's tables, right? Um, that yeah, I was like acting out the things we yeah, do so in social media. So for the we because the video couldn't pop up for our audience. Okay, right. Sorry. Come up and you'd sit down with like two guys who are having coffee outdoors, and then you would say to them. Hey, do you want to be my friend? Would you be friends? Will you accept my friendship request? I told yeah. people on the subway how many people were viewing them. Yeah. I was like, you know, like I went, I just, I checked into Grand Central Station, you know, like I was like, I've just checked into Grand, I did all the things that we do on social media yeah, and when you see life. them like that, but real life. they look ridiculous. Yeah. 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 So, uh, um, but um, when you, uh, when you're doing this, uh, forget it. Go ahead. Keep going. I had a question. Yeah, no. So just back to the Starbucks one, I had no idea. So we didn't get releases, but then like one paper wrote an article about it and they thought I was in cahoots with Starbucks. Like it was branded content. I was like, I wish I was in cahoots with okay. Starbucks. Like I should only be so lucky. Well, um, but- you, like, um, like what do they call those? Uh, the people that are, that are shooting out in the street without, without the permits. Uh, uh, like running gun. Uh, but yeah, there's another word for it. But pa- paparazzi? Gonna... No, 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 no. It's like when you're shooting a movie in the city, but you don't really have the permits. So there's a um, word for it. We're gonna d- listen. Just so you know, we're doing this this style. And okay. I, I thought it was running. And here's the here's the rule with permits. If you don't have a tripod, you're allowed to shoot anywhere but inside. So as long as you don't have a tripod down, you don't need a permit. Uh huh. Oh, that's good. Then. But, yeah. 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 So for like. So for Starbucks, I got no releases. Then the next one I did, um, so that went viral. Then I did the no selfie zone. I almost got arrested for that one. The police came for me because yes, you're not. You were also dressed. I mean, technically. Right. Okay. So for our audience, Jenna Kingsley, you go and you check out her videos. She has one called no selfie zone. So she's in Central Park. And I don't, it looks like a Cub Scout. You actually look like a. I know. I look kind of. It's not really. It a, like a, it's not really a police uniform, but just because. It's a park it, ranger uniform, oh basically. Like, yeah, it's it's cute. It really it looks really cute, but <laughs> it, uh, just so uh, so you're going up to people who are taking selfies and you're telling them, "I'm sorry, you can't take a selfie here. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to write you a ticket." Yeah. So I was like. You know, I told people it was a no selfie zone. So apparently it's illegal to impersonate an officer. And it's illegal. <laughs> you didn't learn that in the homicide squad? <laughs> I know, uh, I did not learn that. And it's illegal to put up official city signs, which is what I did all around the Bethesda fountain. Yeah, but apparently um, you don't give a F. <laughs> I didn't care. No, you and don't then, care. I love it. And uh, even when the, the, the park 
people came to kick me out. Like, cause what happened was someone started stealing money from the fountain. Like oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. 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 And people came up to me and they're like, someone's stealing money from the fountain. And that's when the Central Park Conservancy came. And I was like, no, no, I was like, those are, so he's like, ma'am, you're not allowed to impersonate an officer. You're, you're not allowed to enforce the law. And I was like, but those are people's wishes. Those are hopes and dreams. And he's like, ma'am, ma'am. So like, <laughs> I, I know the answer is I don't care, no. Um, but then for the no for the next one I did was the social networking in real life that Bill is playing. I got oh. releases because that was for a brand and I had to protect them. So every single person you see in this video, except one person. It's actually on the screen and playing. Oh uh, yes, here it is. I don't, is there sound? There's no sound right now. Oh, uh, yeah, this thing uh, with the Zoom. Once we get on the stream yard, we'll be able to do all this. That's that's, that's why I. Yeah, we should. I know. Just, um, yeah, it's a shame, but you'll come back. We'll show the stuff. Yeah, but I'll definitely come back. I'm saying, I'm saying the titles of uh, the video so people can that are watching can check them out. Okay. Um, the, there you go. There you go. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. So easy. Just I don't even know what it means, but it's the thing to do. Do you think you're going to endorse me too? Because. I'm pretty good at it. Sure. Okay, cool. Hi, guys. Hello. I was wondering if you would, like, accept my friendship request. Friendship what? He looks really important with, like, the whole button down. Do you want to be connected? Do you want to be connected? How do, I, how do you want to be connected? I just want to let you know that 12 people have viewed you. I'm sorry? 12 people have viewed you on the subway. What does that mean? I don't know, he must be really important. They're like, viewing you. That guy chose to remain anonymous. Seven people have viewed you on the subway. I have just checked into Grand Central Station. What's your name? Andrew. Jenna and Andrew have just checked into Grand Central Station with about uh, 452 other people. I am getting so many views right now. I am. Oh my God, man. That's so cute. I have to share this with everybody. Do you want to comment on how cute this is? This is cute. I like your comment. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can you introduce me to that guy that's sitting next to you? This guy? You're like our one degree connection. Okay. So if you could introduce me. All right, and your name is? Jenna. Jenna. Excuse me? Hey, uh, my, uh, my friend over here, uh, Jenna, she'd like me to uh, introduce you to her. Oh. Hey, Jenna. Hey. I'm Jenna. I mean, we had him in common, so I figured I should meet you. And now we're all connected. So uh, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That, that one but, had 1.3 million views, right? You know what's not interesting that, about the whole process? Year, that, um, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say last year, some, this is crazy. Someone wrote to me last year, they read about it in a book. And a woman in the UK wrote a book and talked about that one, which is amazing. And uh, so it's kind of interesting, like the reach that these have now, like the terms and conditions is being taught in first year law classes. They're playing it in law classes. Wow. What, you, like, what do you mean in terms of- I guess that makes me a lawyer now. To, um, to, uh, to, to what you're allowed to do as far as video? No, I did a video called terms and conditions, oh. um, which I was giving out a free iPad in Washington Square Park. At Union Square Park, and people just had to agree to the terms and conditions, and like on an iPad, and give their email address. And I was like, "Did you read them?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah." And then as they walk away, I let them know what they agreed to, because nobody which was. Them. Which was what? You're gonna have to watch it to find out. Um, okay. No, one one was like, I like a woman would walk away, and I was like, "Did you always want to be an organ donor, or was this like an impulsive?" <laughs> or like great. you know things like that. So okay. there was all these different things. You know, that's great. Who, who backs these? Who, who is the producer of these things? So 
So the producer of the first two um, were the people that produced the um, live from Gotham show. And then okay. the, uh, the other two were um, Atlantic Pictures. The social networking in real life was for a brand. So I was hired up front by a brand to create something. And they had like a LinkedIn kind of thing. So I thought the social networking idea would be good. Um, and then I did, I don't know if you saw it, it wasn't hitting camera, but last year I did, um, I did a campaign for Walmart's uh, mattress in a box company all's well. And I got in bed with New Yorkers. It was oh, like, okay. let's cool, cool. That's great. Together. So when, when you have a, a, a brand, they pay for the production and everything. So no, we had, we, Bill and I were, um, it's not, it's not going to come up, Bill. Yeah, this is a, this is the picture of her in the back of a truck in a, yes, a that's me. It's not coming up though. Uh, it, ta it takes sometimes a minute to load. Just keep talking. That's so they're what... they're so fun to do, and I honestly never imagined all like four of them went viral, which is crazy. Like really viral, like television. Uh, uh, the the no selfie zone was on True TV's like funniest prank video of the year. So uh, that was cool. Um, I never expected any of that to happen. They were just ideas that I wanted to try out, and I didn't even think anyone would see most of them. So it's. Pretty cool. Jenna, what do you think the secret is to the for the video to go viral? You know, it's really interesting. I was just talking about this the other day. I don't know any, like, I don't know. First of all, the, the topics I did were all things that applied to, I think they were not newsworthy, but they're things that we're doing all the time and we uh, don't think about, right? Like first for, there's apps for everything. So for the Starbucks, like, would people believe that Starbucks is now using an app or the no selfie zone, right? Selfies were such a big thing. Would people believe that there's a no selfie zone in Central Park? And ironically, years later, they made them at the, um, in LA at the Griffith Park, Exert Park by the observatory because people were like falling off a cliff. So they actually made a no selfie zone. So um, I think topics have a lot to do with it. I think they were good if I do say so myself, but Back then, like, I mean, you know, the algorithm is always changing, but it used to be you'd see things in time order on your timeline. So everyone had an equal opportunity to get their things seen. And it's like, may the best content win is really what it came down to. Now that's not the case because now algorithms determine what you're seeing. So, you know, I follow you on, fa I'm your Facebook friend, Bill, like, I rarely see your stuff. I see the same 11 people and they're not even people who I want to see their stuff. So I don't even know how it works. Whereas right. when these videos were made, you know, you'd post this, this algorithm thing is pretty new. It's like a year old or two years old. And I think that actually changes the way that things are seen because if you're not, if it's not shared by something that either has millions of likes already an account that has like you might not even see something really awesome so not to say things don't go viral they do but i don't know well jenna you know it's amazing if as we just really switched over to youtube we were actually wasting our time on facebook because the algorithm for almost two years yeah and facebook really does nothing for you as far as monetizing it you know yeah yeah but anyway the thing is you'll see these real crime shows on youtube with mm -hmm. people hosting them that have no experience and no knowledge about what they're talking about, but it's like just like a big soap and they're opera. doing well. Yeah, some of them have a hundred thousand followers, and you're like, well, oh, basically oh. telling you the story. They take you step by step to the story. They're not really Are adding anything to it. What's that? Are they like detectives? No, no, no. no. They're just uh, it's somebody who is a fan of real crime. And they'll just, they read this story in one paper, they'll reference it. And then they read another story in People Magazine, they'll reference that. And they just, so if I don't know uh, a whole lot about this particular story, right? I can learn everything about this story by watching this one person. Wow. They're not really analyzing anything either. Once in a while they'll make, well, I don't know if that really happened, but, you know, and, but they're just basically taking you, they collected all the information on their own. That's yeah, that's yeah. responsible for. Yeah. Um, but like Bill said, those the, those people are um, they're doing really, really well. But that's why yeah. Bill has a true crime 
um, he, he does a true crime show on for our Patreon customers, and he's doing really well with that because, you know, I know there's people that, you know, they like to talk about it, but wouldn't you rather hear about it from somebody that actually yes, has the, sure. uh, you know, he knows what he's talking about. For but sure. you know, well, Jenna, that's... Jenna, there's yeah. so many like people that are doing the Long Island serial killer. People are grabbing onto that and there's really no new information. So right, they're just, right. in, they're inventing shit. I'm telling you, they're just repeating the same shit that everyone is talking about. Right, and when right. I tell you, I, I was, I did three episodes with this woman named Barbara Butcher, who was the chief okay. of staff of the New York City office of the chief medical examiner. She's oh, brilliant. Wow. She's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And her and yeah. I did three episodes on uh, on the Long Island serial killer. And yeah. one of these one of these it, idiots that doesn't know anything says, "Oh, you guys don't even aren't even close." And I was just like, <laughs> "Do you know who you're, you're like, talking you know what to?" I did, right? I, I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I, only, I only did 27 years, and you know. 15 years I mean, of homicide yeah, and, and this is the chief of staff of the OC. I mean, yeah, we don't know what we're talking about. You know, I was just like, <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask you guys and I, I just like my podcast that came out today, we were, Regine and I were talking about this. There's this thing now, everyone, because of the internet is like an, an internet detective and there's right. people joining together to solve yeah. crimes, which is right. kind of well, it, amazing. It, it, the network- obsession. That Netflix show, yeah. the one with the Asian girl on the elevator. I didn't the hotel see in California. She went to. Um, oh, right, right. Uh, that, she, that's a she, big hit. Gina mentioned it, that. Well, that was the original case that started all the people, uh, all these online investigators. That was the one because everybody oh. started chiming in. Like, for example, she's doing this thing in the elevator. I don't know if you've seen it, Bill, but. Um, she's pushing these buttons and then they figured out, well, that's a thing that could take you into another, uh, it's a game people play. You press the ninth floor, then you press the first floor, then you press the seventh floor, and then you do this number thing. And when you get out, you're in another uh, dimension. But unfortunately- oh, so they think she disappeared. What's no, the name no, of that show? You watch Regina the whole Mendes series, and... that's, they, you know, they know what happened. I don't want to spoil it. That, that reminds me of Saturdays at Mount Sinai Hospital. <laughs> When the elevator would stop at every it's single floor because they're like, the they're not Shabbos allowed to elevator. touch the buttons. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? It's the Shabbos. <laughs> the resident Jew will weigh in. It's right. the Shabbos. To get to the ninth floor, Shabbos I had to stop elevator. at every single damn floor. I'm like, how did I get on this elevator? I'm not I know. You never <laughs> want to be on the Shabbos elevator in no. a hospital. You'll be there it's forever. It's so interesting that you bring that up. <laughs> um, no, but did you see the truth about cats? Yeah, I saw that. What was I, that, I forgot, was, what was that so about again? fucked up it was like about a serial killer and that was one of the things you have to watch that i, I, I think did it was watch on Netflix. It, i forgot i, I watched it so it long was, ago. and i don't really and i'm sure you guys don't like to watch i say like i don't like to watch crime shows because i like worked in like like the real thing and some uh-huh. of it's so fake but this was so good it yeah, was yeah i like, like that i remember it but i just don't remember the details stuff. i don't remember the details there was like a serial killer and I'm going to botch the whole story, but go watch. You know what, Bill? Podcast. Let's do the commercial right now. Let's take, uh, we're going to take a, a two minute. Bring the, can you bring the thing I'm up? Gonna, I'm going to try. <laughs> Let's see. All right. It's almost coming up. It's almost there. It's, it's, it's slow to load. That's why we're, for all our listeners, we're getting off of Zoom and we're going to go. go I know on this was yard. my fault, everybody. No. Yeah, the stream you always seem to, uh, it's going to work a lot better. But anyway. Keep talking and it'll All right, forget up. the picture then. Let's just, uh, we'll just, uh, I'll tell Jenna about it. Yeah, tell me about it. Jenna, we, we are being sponsored by the best oh. hot sauce in the world. You know what the name of it is? What? Silk City Hot Sauce. <laughs> and guess what? It's made in small batches with pure ingredients they use locally grown peppers, and that's the foundation of every bottle of Silk City hot sauce. There's uh, several different flavors, mild to wild, and the labels. Hold on one second. I just want. To, oh fuck! They uh, they use this really cool artwork. I don't know who the artist is, but every bottle's got this really cool uh, artwork on it. That oh, wow, that, that is that cool. One, yeah, that one's killer hot. And they 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 really taste. Uh, I'm on this special diet right now. 
and uh, I eat everything organic now. Oh, that's good. And, uh, that's good. This is all organic stuff. Yeah, that's that's the seafood diet. You seafood and you eat it, right? <laughs> no, 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 man. I haven't had meat in over a month. Oh, I I'm gave I gave up meat and dairy uh, two years ago. Yeah, man. I, you I know quit. something? <laughs> when people start talking shit about their diet, I give them Steve Jobs. <laughs> Was, well, a, was a was an obnoxious vegan and died at fifty. I know. I won't well, talk listen, about that's it. Not, I listen. I I don't know how I'm gonna die, man. But like uh, the pain in my stomach that was going on from all the because I just kept eating whatever I wanted to. I was eating uh, bread and and all. The, I'm allergic to gluten, turns out, and then the dairy on top of it. So now I feel a hundred percent better. But I do use the Silk City hot sauce on everything. That kind of sort of is what makes it tolerable. I'm eating vegetables now. Okay. And five different flavors. They got this uh, Bobby Biggs Chipotle, uh, and there's one called Badass Jew. That's the best flavor. Oh, by the Badass way. Jew! I need to eat that. Uh, and that's because uh, the, the the owner's last name is Levine. I love that Badass. Jew. Uh, there's that's Slurp. Crazy. There's Mango Madness. And guess what? If you go on SilkCityHotSauce.com, you can order it. It's very inexpensive. Get five bottles. It'll come out to about twenty bucks. But it'll even be even cheaper if you use the coupon code and you use OTC for off the cuff, you'll get a 15% discount. So right now, go to SilkCityHotSauce.com, pick out your five flavors, and then they'll throw in a free bottle of Cherry Sriracha. Just put in OTC for off the cuff and get your 15% discount. All right, now we're back to Jenna. I'm definitely wow. buying that bad, badass juice. Oh, it's good stuff. I really, really enjoy it. <laughs> That's it like a great you know what it is? It, it's um, it's it's so it tastes like it was just made. Like I just made it myself, yeah. and right. it's not too heavy. It's it's hot, but, but it's Jenna, good. don't don't take it on the elevator at Mount Sinai on Saturday though. <laughs> oh God. Who else? Who's drunk? Not I am. Do you have any uh, go-to recipes? Um. I do. I'm, I'm going to come back to you drunk, not I am, because I threw it. I threw some of the hot sauce in something I made the other night, and it, it really woke it up. Um, Brian Investigative Group dipped in hot sauce. Hey, oh, my God. Our, our new tier, dipped in hot sauce. <laughs> you know, I always mean to have one of our mugs of handy, but I, for some stupid reason, I don't have one. We, uh, our, we have a Patreon, Jenna, and our oh. top tier is dipped in butter. And that's a whole story in itself. But now we can create a, we, maybe we create a $15 tier or a hundred dollar tier. And see call see the mystery that everyone loves is a sexual innuendo to it. What are you going to dip in butter? That's well, the now question. Now you guys have to have an OnlyFans. That's what you need. Yeah. Oh, we, we got this guy, uh, Liam. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say his last name. Tohi. He says, I've watched about every episode of POC started back in February 2019, but I've never in the chat box. Always a consistently great podcast. Thank you so much, Liam. Oh, that's nice. Very, you know what? Some people, the people are kind. Like Bill mentioned, Aaron sent us the bottle of wine. And oh, nice. uh, thank you so much for that. This is and really, you know, yeah, if, keep sending the wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, uh, if there's anybody funny. out there and they happen to, um, I don't know, have uh, a connection to te tequila, you own a tequila company. <laughs> or you uh, you know somebody, or you have a liquor store on your corner that has great tequila, and you want to send it to me. <laughs> I've gotten really into tequila, man. I love tequila. What tequila do you drink? I didn't, yeah, I didn't think it was possible to drink tequila every day. I love tequila. I drink it every day now. Really? Which tequila do you drink? Uh, this. Uh, the, hey, listen, the, the, I like this Cimarron one. Okay. That I get. It's Cimarron, C-I-M-A-R-R-O-N. Okay. But that one's like really like, but then again, you know, listen, I'm, I'm ghetto, man. I'm here in the Bronx, man. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> last night I went to do my spot and I saw the Patron there. I was like, how much is that for the comics? And she was like, oh, that's 16. I was like, all right, just give me the regular. Uh, I'll <laughs> the do it well. The regular <laughs> swill. <laughs> give me the free you know one. And guess what? It was good. It's fun to get it like it's fun to change up the tequila like do some mezcal which took a long time for me to like because it tastes really smoky but if you do like mezcal with like a slice of orange it's really good. I never had that what is that? It's like it's tequila but it tastes literally like someone poured smoke into it and it took me oh, a long wow. time for it. Like, see that tomorrow it's actually delicious. That. I recommend trying the mezcal to switch up your tequila. Yeah tomorrow I'm getting that for sure just to yeah. switch up. Mezcal. 
Mezcal. Um, do you guys miss being detectives? Like, do you miss being on the job? Sometimes I miss the big cases, but yeah. over, overall, when I see what's going on right now, I'm, I'm happy to be off the job. I did almost 27 years, so it's crazy. I had I had enough of it. You know, I yeah. know, they always tell there's so many limericks on the job, but one of is one of them is that you'll know when it's time to go, and it's true. Yeah, you, know, you just know I've had enough. You know. Yeah. How about you, Mark? Do you miss how many how many years were you on the job? I miss the camaraderie. I like the action of it all, but. You know, when you're working in the squad, there's a lot of pressure. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of cases, if, especially if you work some place that's busy. Yeah. And if you're handling cases that, like, I used to do robberies and burglaries, but I would do that because, you know, you can get your days off. Yeah. And come in when you want. So but here I am handling these very up. complicated cases, and a lot of times. You know, those are the ones they call in on. And I'm, I took that I took that because I had to get out to do spots. Like, I was done at 6. I was in the city already. 6, 7. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I grabbed two hours overtime. But I got to – now I'm leaving because I got to uh, – I got to do – I got to go do a comedy spot. And I remember right, actually, right, right. like, you know, asking my partner, hey, could you interview this person for me? Because uh, I, got a, I got a spot. <laughs> but we would work together, you know. I would, I would do it for yeah, him, yeah. do it for me. That's the way you worked, you know. Yeah. yeah. But it was a lot of pressure. It was a lot of, pre- you know, like you get calls at home. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. off. You hey, know, they, they called Mark, up. You know what home. I always remember? I just remember walking around from the whole time I was in homicide in a coma because I never slept. You always did like you know forty to fifty hours a month overtime, and you lived at work. So you, oh, and I, I was teaching at, at a college part-time. So I had two jobs and there was the Sergeant's Benevolent Association delegate. So I walked around with bloodshot eyes for like 10 years, you know, because <laughs> you never got enough you know sleep. what's funny is I could fall asleep. Um, if you give me, like, for example, I was working as a, the, the gig the, the, as, a, as, as a concierge. And I, this guy walks in, the, uh, what we, uh, we change. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going to take a, I said, I'm going to take a nap for 15 minutes. And he goes, you could take a nap for 15 minutes? I said, yeah, well, I, I do 18. Three, it takes me like two and a half minutes to actually fall asleep. But I, so I could take, I fall asleep. If I see an opportunity to sleep, I go in. Because as working as a detective and as a cop, you never knew when the next opportunity to sleep was. So if you had a moment there to shut your eyes, you did it. I could fall asleep on a nail. It's amazing. I put my head, That's I why leave, I leave my head on a nail question. and I'll fall asleep. I'll be out cold. And I take advantage. 12 minutes. I'll set, sometimes I'll set it for 15 minutes knowing I'm going to get a 12 minute nap. It's crazy. And Mark, people That's- are asking uh, what you drink because they say they'll send you a bottle. I'm reluctant. To, I'm reluctant to nah, let them know. I was just kidding. I didn't want that. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I I drink tequila. Viewers, you guys have such good viewers and listeners. No, everybody's really cool. We got a we got a really good good group of followers, and for our followers, make sure that you go on and you check out these videos. Uh, Jenna Kingsley, and it's with one N, by the way. Right, my parents spelled it wrong. So you're you're not like the porn star, right? You're no, like, I think they tried and they spelled it wrong because they were from. Brooklyn, they wanted to name parents. you after the porn star. Um, I, and I think I don't know, but it it was like after my grandmother Je- uh, Jenny, and they picked Jenna, but they yeah. didn't spell. Well, it. But you could spell it. I think uh, maybe the Jewish way to spell it is with one N. You think so? I I don't know. I think it's two Ns. Because my whole life people were like Gina, Gina. I'm like Jenna. How how um, old is your how old is your son right now? He's 16. He's turning 17. Oh my month. God! Can you believe it? Yeah, we we used to have sixteen. Me, Bill, and I used to have sixteen and seventeen year olds. Yeah, I know it's so time goes well. That's why, not that it's nice because this is horrible, the pandemic for kids. But for oh yeah, when you have a teenager. I've been freaking out about oh he's going to go to college, you know, in a year and a half. So now I have all this time with him that you know he's a good kid, so it doesn't. We would have you know, never had that before. That's I, the one good so thing. Nice. I mean, there's so it's many. It's not people. nice. It sucks, and it's really sad. No, for but the, 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 the one good thing that came out of this is the fact that um, there's a lot of people that got to spend more time with their family, parents, or their grandparents that they normally would have never spent. 
Yeah. Those lockdowns, yeah. that quarantine, going home. Um, you know, people got a chance to go home to spend time with their parents as a young adult. But yeah. the truth is, they also missed out on proms and formals and all this. I got right. two kids. And, you know, my son, he's lucky he graduated college um, right at the uh, when it before COVID. And now he's in nursing school. So he's a little upset because he can't really, you know, and there's a lot of hot chicks in his in his uh, program. He goes to NYU. Oh, that's a great school. Yeah, that's you gotta, great. He's pulling off some scam, my son. You got to see the girls that he's going to school with. It's insane. <laughs> and he wa- obviously he wants to be in class and spending more time with them. And do they do go in like two days a week. And did they, During the pandemic, did they bring the students in to help with everything that was going on? Like, yeah, well, he, no? went today, he went today to Mount Sinai somewhere. They actually have him doing stuff and dealing with patients. He goes to okay. different uh, wards and stuff. But my daughter's in her senior year in college. And she's got a couple of more months left. And, you know, for like the, le- the senior year and a half a year before, you know, which would have been her her heyday in college. She's yeah. in a sorority, you know, kind of sort of like, you know, no parties, no stuff like that. They still had fun, yeah. but it's not the same. Yeah, it's, it's, this whole thing is like surreal. I was walking today, like I have a bad, like a shoulder injury. So I was like walking and then, I went to physical therapy and I'm walking down the street in the city and I just, the masks and then you go into the office and it's mat and it's just so, so I still can't believe it's real. Like I, I, we've been living now in two weeks, it's a year. We've been you like, do one, you know, you should do a video like that where you have a mask, but you also have a shield and then you have something else on top of that. Like the most amount that you could have. Like, By the uh, way, don't, in the beginning, don't think I would people, want. You're not, you're not even protected. And you're like, look, I got one, two, three, four <laughs> masks. I got the shield. <laughs> just to sh- you just wear a body, a body condom, you know? I mean, it's such a good time for, for to come up with something like content related to it. But at the same time, you can't really film anything because everyone's faces are covered, you know, and it's yeah, people's yeah, yeah. reactions. I did, um, I did a Zoom prank for charity, actually. I pranked a meeting, a Zoom meeting the other, like two weeks ago. That was so much fun. That was so oh, much you, fun. Oh, so you came in as somebody... Um... It was for like a school gala and that benefit from me. I did two. One was the teachers had a meeting and I pranked that meeting. And How'd you do it? Well, I came into the parents um, and I said, I was like the person, like I was helping, I was from the company organizing the Zoom, meet, uh, Zoom gala and I was giving them tips for like an, a gala to make it successful. But I was like, you know, we also, because it's a school event, we have to comply with you know, school rules. So if there is a pet in the background of your Zoom, you do need to um, provide service animal papers, you know, just because it's going to be part of the school, you know, and people are like, it's in our house. And I was like, I know, but it's a school. (laughs) And then I was like, you know, we do need a fire safety committee. So you're going to have to, you know, you know, we're going to do a fire drill a week before because we're like 300 people. I'm like, everyone has to log on. You have a fire, you know, I was making them crazy. Finally, this one mother was started to lose her mind. She was like, you're going to lose your business. You're going to lose your business. This is un, we're in our, oh, because I said you can, you know, if you're eating or drinking in front of the computer, you can have your mask off. But if you get up to go to the bathroom, just like a restaurant, you have to have your mask on because it is a school function. And she's like, this is, no one's going to do this. Like, anyway, she lost her shit and she's like, come on. And she was like saying to everyone, because everyone was being, in general, what I found when you do these pranks, people are not expecting to be pranked, right? So they don't think that someone's fucking with them. They think it's real, right? And they're uh-huh. just conf- uh-huh. more confused. Uh-huh. Even in all the videos you saw, people <laughs> don't want to kind of veer from their day. So they'll go along with it to an extent. And then <laughs> anyway, she's like, does anyone else think this is crazy? Does anyone else think this? Speak up, speak up. This woman's crazy. And I was like, I was, that was the only time I almost laughed because you see it on Zoom. This mom was, they were all such sports, but I'm like, it was so hard to laugh because I couldn't even move my body. And I'm watching this woman unravel and i'm just like this is so when did you let her in on it so when she was like this is crazy does anyone else think it's crazy 
and then someone else was like, I mean, it's a little crazy. And I was like, it is crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. I was like, that's because I am not an event planner. I don't know the first thing about a Zoom gala. I was <laughs> like, I'm a comic and you're being pranked right now. Uh-huh. By the way, even after I told them, they were like, what? Because no one's expecting in their Zoom meeting to have someone come in and fuck with them. Like nobody is expecting that. <laughs> that was brilliant, man. Yeah, it was that really was fun. Brilliant. That was, Jenna, really I love. I wish I could post it, but uh, one of the moms doesn't want to sign a waiver, so I can't. Jenna, I I love the the uh, young like kid you grabbed in Grand Central and grabbed his arm. Yeah, was, I know. He, he was <laughs> like, <laughs> well, even the shoe polish guy, like the guy in the middle. Yes, yeah, yeah. We got the waiver after he said the cutest thing. He's like, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm cute. Like, why is yeah, she? Right, why is she? Want me? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was that was a little. Uh, yeah, it was. I was looking at that guy. I'm like, he's good looking too. He was probably. He was so upset. He's like, I was so upset. I was like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> That's um, so funny. Yeah, so they, they were all, let's, let's warn the New Yorkers. What do you got coming up? So right now, just my podcast because I'm not doing anything. It's um so you know just social studies with Jenna Kingsley. I would tell people to follow me on Instagram at Jenna Kingsley because I make some funny stories. I follow Bill. Bill follows me. I'm gonna have to follow you, Mark. <laughs> Are you on there? On LinkedIn? Yeah, on yeah. Instagram. I, no, Instagram. On Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course I'm on Instagram. I don't know how, I have LinkedIn. I don't really even know how to use it. Well, you know, oh, my, uh, let me tell you something, Jenna. You're doing a podcast? Get on LinkedIn. Okay. You can find right. some great, great guests on LinkedIn. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, you just, do you just contact strangers? Well, yeah. I'll, I'll see what their credentials are. And yeah, I found some amazing guests. That's a great tip, by the we way. We just we just found an 18 year old genealogist who's coming on our show, and the kid oh, has his own he has his own business. He's been doing it since he's eight years old. What a find that is, right? Yeah, Bill is great. He solves, is he solves cases for for police departments now too. Are Bill you is casting, oh, Bill is casting yeah. everybody else's podcast too because they all they all love uh, they love our guests because Bill we, Bill gets his great guests. So uh, I would imagine you guys are like, people are loving this because this is like heavy. When I went and got my master's in forensic psych and like studied like serial homicide, people were like, what's wrong with you? And now, now everyone's like so into it. I was like, See, right. I told you. like cool. you gotta do, you gotta do a, a video, uh, one of these videos where you would like, um, well, it's a homicide scene, right? Because you know about homicides, but here's the thing about homicides. Yeah. Working as a detective, I'll tell you, people have a certain amount of tolerance, okay? But mm-hmm. if they want to go home or they want to get down that block, um, you know, especially New Yorkers, they don't, they don't have very little patience. Yeah, yeah. All right, the person's dead, I get it. You know, there's a thousand and one jokes I saw a great one the other night where, you know, the guy's like looking at his watch, like, all right, so, um, <laughs> you know, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? So it has to be something in that where it's a kind of, it could be a homicide, but you're not sure. The person's still alive, but he might die. So I can't right. leave <laughs> block, Something like right. that. Like, I'm going to have to bring you guys going, It's a potential homicide. And people are like, what do you mean? Pretend? Well, the guy's not dead yet, but he, he looks like he's taking his last breath. <laughs> Could be a homicide sc- uh, scene. So, and they're like, if, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if he's not dead yet, I can still get to my apartment. Uh, yeah, right. I, I, I always thought about the guy who's not dead and people start wrapping the yellow crime scene tape up and the guy be like, hey, wait a minute, I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, like you could do, um, you could go over the radio. Is he dead yet or, or could they still get down the block? <laughs> yeah, like that's... people actually want to step over the body to get yeah, yeah. into their apartment. <laughs> yeah, that's Sorry. I mean, you know, when someone, it's terrible but when there is a homicide or like a suicide someone jumps everyone is staring at the body Uh uh-huh well you could actually that could be one of your questions like if we let you in would you mind stepping over the body (laughs) i'm gonna if i do a homicide one i'm gonna bring you guys with me (laughs) we can play play the other detectives but that's a good question like listen if we do let you in you have to agree you can't you don't mind stepping over the body (laughs) well the body you have to become the body's the funnier 
the body. You're going to have to say, because he's not dead yet, if he dies while you're walking down the block, you're now a suspect. <laughs> no, right. your DNA could be in there. Just so right, you know, your DNA, if, if you, you might become a suspect. If he dies while you're walking past him, your DNA will be in the crime scene. I'm just letting you know. J Jenna, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know what I used to love? I used to love when it would be a crowd of uh, guys in the project, and you'd pick up the radio and pretend it was a camera, and pick it up, and they would start booking. They'd start running just because they didn't want their picture taken. And it wasn't even a camera. And we would just howl laughing that they ran. Oh, they didn't want oh. Their... oh, my God. It was I've, ideal. I've, I've been on so, so many crime scenes where the, you know, the people get annoyed because they want to get down the block. They live there. Right. So right. you have, like, depending on where the perp ran, it, it, you know what they did afterwards they'll be blocking off that whole area it could close down the whole block while you're doing the investigation oh yeah people live there so i think that's that's gold right there you can just, yeah <laughs> he's not I, the thing is he's not dead yet he's still, <laughs> squir he's still squirming around <laughs> he's not dead if you hurry now you can make it to your apartment. Would you what? would you have to get a union actor to play the DOA or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, it has to be more than one. But if he does die, you, you know, if they do die, then you you have to agree to you're gonna you might have to walk over the bodies. <laughs> and just so you know, your DNA is gonna be in the crime scene. Oh, I have remind me, I have someone to introduce you to, like a friend of mine who's a producer for, for true crime television shows. I just realized I should put you guys in touch. Just remind me when we're done with this. But we, don't do, we, don't, we don't do well with those true crime shows because they don't want to pay you. And that's where the conversation ends, right there. So one of my friends is a producer and she called me once because I kept saying like my dream would be to be like a, a crime reenactor, like a like a re like an over actor. Like I wanted to prank the set, right? Like yeah. I wanted them to not tell the director <laughs> and the producer that I was like like a ringer right and i'd come in and i would over act you know because it's yeah, always someone just like walking and then they, they they're dead right it's not like and i wanted to come in like a method actor and get really into it and make my part more than it was so i kept asking finally one day she's like we need a girl so she called me she's like okay it's like your lucky day we need a girl who's like doing karaoke who gets killed but it was so far away in new jersey and they it was not worth my my trip right. it's funny um, it's funny if you were but going, that would have been so fun if you're just if they hire you as a prank to just be like uh, uh the person who died's friend on this make-believe show and then you really overreacted or you were just a witness and you uh, started crying and right but, that's what i wanted to do just be so you're not even crying about the crime you're just crying about something that happened to you that day i'm sorry I that day, I I yeah, I by the car but that was the day my boyfriend broke up with me and he just started crying, <laughs> crying over that. That would be hysterical. <laughs> You're not even crying because of the, <laughs> the crime. You, you know, Jenna, it's so, it's so true. Those Mark's done these. I, I've done like six episodes of uh, of The Perfect Murder on, and they paid us, you know, not a lot okay. of money. But I did Shattered and I, had to, I flew to Atlanta and they almost didn't even oh, cover wow. my expenses. I was like, and now when I get a call from them and Mark does the same thing, how much? Oh, what are you talking about money? Because if I if there's no money involved, you're talking to the wrong guy, right? <laughs> right, right. But would wouldn't it now be good for your podcast if you were on these things? Eh, not, you I, have not such really. a big. They keep they keep playing the old ones. They keep they they play all the time. Right, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, so that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, if so we wanted to, we could. You know, I was on Law and Order SVU last year and FBI's Most Wanted. We could just run those in the beginning of. Uh, yeah. We can run like two parts on a TV show, Bill. Why don't we just do that at the top? That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because, you, because I want to see it. If it's copyrighted, you can't get paid by YouTube. No, I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic anyway. But uh, so um, uh, the reason why I asked you where you got cooking now, I just wanted to wake up New Yorkers and let let them know, like if you're if you're somewhere. Yeah, New Yorkers, come and get involved. Definitely. You, you might have to, to put on a disguise from now on. The what? You might have to put I might on. Have to put on it. I know, I know. Because once know. Jenna, how did you get up to three? How did you get up to three thousand subscribers on YouTube? It was because I, I literally just had when my videos went viral, I just kept. But did you just subscribe. did you just sign up for YouTube, or you've been on it for a while? Oh no, no, no! My videos that I made were 
released on YouTube. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, those are not new on YouTube. I, I recently put them on IGTV just to have them all in one place. But the what original- is that? What would you, would you put it on? Oh, Instagram. Uh, on in IGTV, so I could have them also on my Instagram. But um, just because like it's easier to have everything in one place. But the, the real videos were released on YouTube. Like I just put them up there. And I had no followers. I just... Yeah, but see, that's unfortunate because you can't go back in time. You basically yeah. get that one for free. And they'll take the one you gave them for free. And now yeah. you could be monetized with the amount of hits that you've gotten. But whatever you get, money you get is going to be from this point forward. It's not going to be those, those three viral videos that you already gave them. But I know. They're, they're all good to work with. You know, years ago, uh, they have a place in the city. And they were offering us. Uh, oh yeah, the YouTube studio. Yeah, I still have. I went contract. in LA. I still have the contract here. It? it was this big. They were like, "Here, if you want to join us, and you the, the the idea was you can film whatever you want, use our studio, and um, you know use our crew, just as long as we get the content. And then once you get to a point right. where you're monetized, then we're going to share it with you. And uh, we all like." idiots we're talking like almost 15 years ago you're like okay. how much is it now like how much are you going to pay us now for our content okay. we're like, no yeah, that's yeah. not the way it works you put it up and if it gets a certain amount of views we'll start and we're like nah 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 we want it now uh don't ask me what we were thinking but i mean we were shooting stuff in in uh in the youtube studios you know 10 12 years ago if you shoot things in the studios do they then own your content yeah that was the whole thing about it you know they owned it and, um, you know, that was, <laughs> it just, in hindsight, you didn't know what it was going to be yet. Yeah. You know, Those you had studios no are amazing though. I went in LA, I actually took my son, um, to visit the one in LA cause I had friends that were members of it. And it's like a real TV set. I don't know what the one well, in New York is like. There's couches, there's all the food you can eat. They have a oh, whole but there's not like there. sets. Well, each, like they the have one in rooms. LA. The one in they LA had, had an entire set, like a police station with a jail. Uh huh. It well, this so one scary. had all different rooms, and you could kind of sort of do whatever you want with them. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying they had the green everything. Yeah. So you get a room, and you could do that. But in the meantime, in the middle, it was almost like MTV Real World. There was couches you could sit there, and yeah. the, there was a kitchen with food, and you could right, go in right. there and get whatever you wanted to eat. And it was great. We used to hang out there all the time. But the whole thing was. Uh, you know, signing over the idea with the content, that's what everybody got scared. So, uh, Bill, yeah. we're at an hour right now. Why don't we give a shout out to uh, people that um, that came in after the fact? What do we got here? Trish Talks. Trish Talks. I would like to see you and Mark discuss cases like Vallow and Watts, etc. You know that who that is? No? Yeah, we will. I we did a show five days ago with Barbara Butcher. It's got twenty five thousand views. But that's wow. Barbara. Barbara Butcher is uh, Barbara Butcher, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's great. Yeah. So, um, is there money involved? No click. I don't know <laughs> that's MC's audio. That's what he was just repeating what we were talking about. Okay. Uh, step over. Promises no tripping. Jeffrey Brzezinski, uh, Ryan Investigative Group, Michelle Serino, Miss Angela P three two three three. Thank you for watching. Uh, Dawn Marie. Also, please, if you like our um, videos, you like our channel, please subscribe to our YouTube. And we also have a Patreon. Uh, it's www.patreon.com slash police off the cuff. For $7 a month, you can be in our bucket tier. You carry the bucket. <laughs> for $9 a month, you can polish my rack. And it's actually my real rack from when I was on the job. And for $11 a month, you can dip them in butter. And I'm going to need you're... like a thing of what these mean. Well, the dipped in butter is, uh, Bill will tell you about that off air. <laughs> if you're so inclined that you're into spicy food, make yeah. sure that you check out the best hot sauce in the world, Silk City Hot Sauce. Go to SilkCityHotSauce.com. That's SilkCityHotSauce.com. Put in OTC for a 15% discount. And... Uh, Jenna, you were a great guest. Oh my God, this was so fun, Bill. It's so good to see you. You too, man. You know, and look, it's we'll have to. Uh, 
We'll have to cross pollinate, as they say. I know. In- you know what? And after when we can go for some drinks, we'll go get some some drinks. Absolutely, absolutely. It's and, uh, and for our fans, the weather out there, warms up. I just want to tell our fans: uh, go uh, Google Google uh, Jenna Kingsley. That's with one N, Jenna Kingsley, and look for her videos. The viral videos are: uh, Are you on the list? That's a Starbucks one. No selfie zone. That's the one in Central Park. And then there's the other one. Uh, what was that with the the befriending? Social, uh, social terms media. And conditions. Yeah. Terms and conditions and social networking in real life. They're brilliant little That's pieces. Great. They're thank little you. masterpieces. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, thank you so much. And there's a podcast called Social Studies. And um, we wish you the best of luck. You are a great guest. Thank you. You guys are so awesome. You got to do the crime scene here. one. You have to do the crime scene one. I think oh, let's do it. it. I literally have nothing to do because of this pandemic. So let's do it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll be so, the whole thing I, is. I don't know if you can get away with doing that out on the street if you have two bodies. Have you two... seen what I've done? Like, of course Oh, yeah, I can yeah. She's going to get away with it. She'll <laughs> tell us no. how to do it. I no. just the funny scene. Like hey, I, 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 I brought her to to real crime scenes. <laughs> yeah, loose cannon. I'd always be like, I want to go with loose cannon. <laughs> I, I couldn't ever believe what he would let me do. I was like, Are you sure? I was like, Is this okay? And he's like, He's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> I was like, This is the best detective to ride with because I really got to have the whole experience. <laughs> yeah you know the one thing about dead bodies the first time you see them you notice how dead they are they're, they're, like, there's no dead. there's no denying that person's really dead no like, they're not no. coming back man they are dead <laughs> i i really like i couldn't believe that was the first time when i saw how much cocaine was on that drug dealer's counter i was like it almost looked fake because they have the like you know the the lights like the the emmy brings in the lights and it's like there's lights flooding the place and it looked like a movie set because it was like narcos there was like piles of cocaine on the counter (laughs) the guy's just like dead in the room i was like and then i don't remember if it was donna or someone said they used to put vicks under their nose or something i I did that the world we worked at the morgue in the world trade center i would Uh, load my mask with vicks because the smoke or you do uh some people they burn coffee yeah, they go in. The, they go in the person's cupboards. They get the coffee out. They burn the co- coffee grinds on the on, on the stove. Well, and they have those like the DOA crystals. Yeah. crystals. The DOA crystals. They smell worse than the DOA. <laughs> I don't know that anything smells worse than the DOA. Yeah, Nothing. True. It was like really, and it stays with you even when you leave. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's you never, still you never inside my smell. brain. You know, people are like, what does it smell like? It smells like you walked into a a, a, a butcher and everything went bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Meat. it's bad meat. That's all good. it is. Anyway, on that note, what better way to end the show, huh? <laughs> Talking about DOAs, yeah. The smell of dead bodies. It was so awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I loved Thanks, it. Jenna. Thanks, Thanks for coming, for coming on. on. You were all great. Our, I all right. All our police off the Bye, cuff. Guys. Thank you. Good night. Everyone. I'm gonna go buy the hot sauce. Yeah, please do. I really am. King, I'm yeah. gonna go do it right now. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. All right.